Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're talking about what's new in Reaper 6.12. There's a lot of cool stuff, uh, a lot of little stuff as usual, um, but I think you're gonna like this. And the first thing I wanna mention is that the free Reaper license for social distancing has been extended till the end of August. I mentioned this before on the channel, they have this free license um, it's linked at the top of the web page. If you're required to work from home right now and uh, your studio doesn't provide a license for you to work from home, um, you can download one from Reaper. We're gonna look at the effects browser. There's a minor reorganization of controls. The first thing you're gonna notice about this change is that the filter is at the top. And I find that this is a much easier uh, location or much better location for it. I find it a lot easier to use like that, especially when it's docked. And when the window is docked, you uh, you will not see the add and cancel buttons um, on there. They'll just be hidden because you can easily drag and drop. Or the next new thing is that uh, you can actually right click and um, add to selected tracks or add to selected items. So let's look at that in a little bit more detail. So let's say I have a couple items selected here, and if I right click on re-eq in the browser i have this option to add to selected tracks or add to active takes of selected items i'll run that and you can see here that re-eq is on these three items the window didn't pop up like it would if you were dragging um but i think that's okay i think that's still very helpful um, to quickly add those uh those things in and if we have multiple tracks selected, we could always drag um, from the browser, which would add the effect to that selected uh, track. Or if we right click, we can add to selected tracks and that's going to do multiple tracks. There are new options for hiding the prefix of VST or audio unit from the list, as well as hiding duplicates. So if you have something that's in VST and VST3 format, or VST and audio unit format, uh, they're going to be hidden uh, and you have the option of, of showing whichever one. So um, if we go to the options menu, show in effects list, we can uncheck plugin type prefixes and duplicates, we could set this to VST3 only. So uh, what we're used to seeing is this. So I'll go to uh, the developers list and then go to IK Multimedia and so I've got I've got VST and VST3s of everything here. If I just uncheck that from the list, ch changing duplicates to show only VST3. So we no longer see VST3 or VST2 uh, listed in here, um, but it's just the VST3s. And another change that they've added is hiding the developer names. So when we're in the IK Multimedia list, IK Multimedia isn't listed in uh, the names of every single plugin here. So that's a nice little change. So in custom folders and smart folders, we'll still see that. Um, it's really just in the developers list uh, where we won't see the uh, duplicate name. Going back to custom folders, uh, we can now drag and drop to rearrange things. So just drag and drop. Very, uh, very convenient to be able to do that. Very intuitive. Uh, we can also hold down the control key and use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move that up and down one at a time. One more thing to show you about the effects browser. Um, you may know that you could replace an effect um, by right clicking and then going to replace. You can now do it just by holding down the alt key and dragging a plugin onto it. So let's take the TR5 tape echo. I'm gonna hold down the alt key, drag it onto the plugin, and that has changed it there. And if I go to the mixer view, hopefully you can see that here. So this track, um, I'm gonna replace, I'm going to replace the uh, TR5 tape echo with redelay, just dragging it onto that plugin instance, holding the alt key. And that's it for the effects browser stuff. Next up, we're looking at some changes to Resample-Matic 5000. There's a minor reorganization of controls. I don't think I could really point out which things have changed, but there is a new Portamento dial here um, for setting a, a note bend amount when you play two notes. So I'm gonna set this to obey note offs and semitone shifted. So I'm gonna use this sample here. 
And I'm going to hit another key. So it starts to bend up. Um, so if we have this at a thousand milliseconds, I think it's about a, I think it's about one second per semitone. Um, it, I was thinking there's one second per octave, um, or one second between first and last note, but it doesn't seem to be. I think it's about um, per semitone. So I'm going to set this to like, I don't know, a hundred milliseconds. So basically, when it's set up like this, you can write in pitch bends. And a lot of people have wanted to do that with 808 basses um, to create sort of a melody with the bass notes um, just by having overlapping notes. So I think that's a really cool and frequently requested addition. The Portamento feature has also been added to the Resynth plugin. Uh, if you have any saved presets, it's actually not going to, to recall that setting. So it's going to be kind of independent, at least with old presets. But let's take this tone here. In the track grouping window, the terminology has been changed. Instead of master and slave, it's now lead and follow. And it makes a lot more sense, and it's definitely less offensive of a term. So functionality is exactly the same, uh, just using different words. Actions for selecting track grouping now go all the way up to 64. It used to be limited to just 32. So uh, select all tracks in groups 33 up to 64 have been added to the action list. In the video processor, we have a new preset called Combine Grid of Videos. This is made by Dr. Jonathan Kemp. So this is very useful for those kind of Zoom call, live video sorts of things where you've got a whole bunch of videos recorded on a phone, for example, and you want to stack them up and put them, arrange them in a grid. Uh, this does that really easily, uh, saves a ton of time. It's still going to be pretty heavy on CPU um, because it's a lot of data to process. Um, I may do a video on this. I've been kind of putting it off since like March. Um, but this preset's going to get you started very quickly on making videos like that. You can also do things like making one of the videos kind of stand out and the other ones kind of form a border around it. Uh, on the screen now, you'll probably see some examples of uh, videos that uh, Dr. Kemp has created using this. When you're editing a custom menu or a toolbar, you can now select multiple actions and add them all at once. Let's say I'm taking these arpeggios and making a toolbar in the MIDI editor. I can now um, select them all, hit select, and then we'll add them all at once into the custom menu. Um, previously, you'd have to add them one at a time. The custom action editor is now a modeless window, which basically means that you can work while this window is open. So you can have this sitting here, and you can still touch the arrange view. You can touch the action list. You can try out different actions before adding them into your custom action. This is a huge help. Pretty much every time I'm making a custom action, there's always some sort of like selection or splitting action that I'm not sure of which of the 15 varieties I should be using in it. And then I have to cancel my building my custom action and then test it and then come back. Just being able to run the actions um, side by side, having this open is a really big help. Small change, huge workflow improvement. And then another kind of accessibility change for this, you can use the control up and down um, to rearrange the order of these. So this is going to be much easier uh, for people that uh, have trouble using the mouse. There have been some changes to item soloing um, and some new actions added to the action list. Uh, I didn't actually get a chance to check which ones of these are new, uh, but just a brief overview of how this works. If you use the the action toggle solo and run that. It's going to actually mute all the other items in your uh, in your project. Run it a second time to reset everything. We can uh, select multiple items like this. Run item pro uh, run the item property solo. We can select another item. Go item property solo exclusive. Exclusive means that only this item will be soloed. And then we can go to un uh, item properties unsolo all. And unsolo all won't affect any previously muted items. So I'll select a couple items here and mute them. 
And then I'll solo this item. Let's do toggle solo exclusive. And then I will do unsolo all. And those previously muted, manually muted items um, won't be unsoloed uh, or, or won't become active from that soloing. One last thing to mention, there was a, some problems with freezing the last few updates. Um, this was happening when you have multiple items on the same track with the same name as the track. And um, I think that's a really common situation, actually. It wouldn't actually freeze all the items properly. This should be fixed now. So that's it for this video. That's all I wanted to cover in this changelog. Uh, there's a lot more things in the changelog, but I think these are the most interesting ones. And if you missed any of the previous update videos, uh, there's a link to the playlist down below and at the end card. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.